Okay. So the next one is this zero one matrix. Ooh, that sounds complicated. Given an M by N binary matrix mat, return the distance of the nearest to zero for each cell. The distance between two adjacent cells is one. I'm guessing, again, we ignore uh, diagonals. Input mat is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. The output is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. I guess all of these, the nearest 0 is 0, and the nearest 0 from here is 1. That makes sense. But this one, ooh, this one has a 2. So the nearest 0 is either there, there, or there. That the, oh, those are the only two examples we get. Okay. Um, all right. Well, let's set it up while I, my brain th tries to think of something to do here. Copy. Um, this is problem 542. Ooh, look at that, right next to 543. Lead lib. 0542. 01. Matrix. And it returns a vec new. All right. Yes. Oh, wait. Um, obstruct solution. There we go. And now um, our tests. So solution update matrix. And we're just going to grab this vec. Just do that. And then it's going to output another vec. So, and it's actually the same vec, right? Uh, in this particular case, vec bang. Oops. There. So now this test should fail. Yep. Okay. So now I, I think. I think it should be, it's like the flood fill thing where, where you, you basically, you go through it and try to calculate how far away you are from each one. And what we can do is for all the zeros, just put zeros and then leave the ones as a, a TBD and then go through the matrix again and update all the ones. All right. Yeah, let, let's try it that way. I that might be a naive solution, but it should work. Let's do we get the get the result. Oh, let's call it output this time. Oh, actually we can what we can do is get the width. Um which is gonna be mat of zero dot len and the height which is going to be mat dot len all right so now we have the width and height and we can just create um a double entry array here right with height and that'll be the output And the reason it's mute is because we we're going to be changing it. So we, the first thing we'll do is we'll go for row in zero dot dot height for call in zero dot dot width. If row call zero, then we know we have in our output row call, we'll set a zero. Else we want to set it to a TBD. And I don't want to use sum and none because that'll get messy. Um, but what we can do is just set it to the maximum possible value, and then we can work from there. Um, the maximum possible value is always going to be a width plus height. All right, so now it should show us a bunch of zeros, and then this middle one should be 9, right? Because it's 3 by 3.
um, expected I-32 found you size. Oh, 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 oh. Um, as I-32. Six. Oh, right, right. Sorry, it's not three times three. It's three plus three. It's six. Okay. So that makes sense. So now we know that we fill in sixes for all of the ones. And now we just need to look uh, at each entry. So what we can do is you can say while change. So let's set let mut changed is true while changed. Uh, and then we'll set change to false right away. And then if we do ch make a change to the matrix, uh, we'll loop through again. So now we'll just do for row height, we'll call in zero dot dot width. Um, and now we need to look up, down, left, and right. Um, except we, we can't, if we're in row zero, all right. Okay, so I think we did something similar to this, right? We could say let up is equal to if row is zero, then the up value is going to be, you know, we can just say max. Let max is equal to width plus height as I32. And just use that as our max else. Um, it's going to be output of row minus one, whatever that value is. Right. And then what we're going to do is once we've gotten all the values for the, the nearest, the up, down, left, right, we can look at those values and see, are they less than the value that's currently stored there? Uh, if row plus one is height, then we'll use max else output of row plus one Left is going to be if call is equal to zero, then we'll do max. Else output of row call minus one. And then let, oops, there should be an equal sign there. Right equals if call plus one equals width, then max. Else output of row call plus one. Now we have up, down, and left, right. Um, we need to calculate the smallest of those values. Oh, we can just chain. This can be one plus the, the, the smallest value. So up dot min, down dot min, left dot min, right dot min. And we can say if output of row call is greater than the current minimum, then output row call gets set to the minimum and changed is true. So we've updated the matrix, which means now we have to recalculate the whole matrix again. This might be too slow, right? There might there might be a time limit on this. Out output min. Nope, just right. There. Okay, so that actually passed the test. I don't know where the test is. It's in here somewhere. Uh, let's put the other test in there to see if that works. Let's do that. Um, test. Boom. EX2. Uh, put those there. And then just paste that in. Oh, got it wrong here. And then the answer should be 000, zero, zero, zero one zero, and then one, two, one. Let's see if that works. 
Um, oh, I missed a comma. Yeah. Okay, so that does the trick. Let's see if it uh, if we can submit this as a solution here. Uh, 465 milliseconds. Okay, so that works. Um, and it's faster than only 6% of the other ones. Okay. Um, I'm, I think we can do better. Because we're, we're scanning the entire matrix each time. And I think we can just use, a, like I was saying before, we could just use a similar thing to a flood fill where we keep track of the ones that have changed and only update those. Um, that might be a little more work to do. Let's commit this change and then we can make that. Um... Oh, let's check with Clippy. Neg Forces says time. Um, because it was 465, yeah. And all the other solutions have been like in the single digits or double digits. And this one was almost half a second to run. Um, git add source, git commit dash m problem 542, the 01 matrix. Okay. But let's keep playing with it because. I think we can do better. Um, instead of scanning the entire matrix each time, we should be able to just uh, update the ones that are actually need to change. So we still want to grab the width, the height, and generate the output. That still needs to happen. And we still want, um, oh, we don't want to store the max anymore. Now what we want to do is, let, let's create, let's do this. Let's use standard collections hash set and the hash set will contain all of the entries that we need to consider after we've done the updating so we can say is hash set new and then when we update this to the max value we want to say hs insert row call like that so now instead of doing this changed business, we can just say while the hash set is not empty, um, oh, how do you pop a random value off a hash set? The reason I want to use a hash set instead of a vector, because that would be the obvious way to do it, right? You just push onto a vector, treat it like a stack, and then pop things off the vector and then process them. Um, the problem is that because we're checking up, down, left, right, it'd be very easy for us to add duplicate entries into the vector. Um, and that's why I want to do a hash set, but I think you can just pop a random Rust get random element from hash set. Can I randomly sample from a hash set efficiently? Hash set does not provide indexing, so you can't generate random samples in constant time. Convert it to a vector. Yeah, so we could do that. Right, we could take the hash set as is and then use the vector and then reset the hash set i guess you can say let v equals hs iter collect uh into a vec of um row collar u sizes right yeah so vec of u size u size And 
Does that, will that build? Oh, not if I don't type collections correctly. And I don't spell iter correctly. Value of can't be built from, oh yeah, so the solution there is into iter. Move occurs because each S has hashed, which does not implement the copy trait. This is moved. Oh, so we can't, I guess, I guess we could just collect it into this, right? Yeah, and then we can say HS clear. And then println V. And then this can also, we can just say uh, output vec new, just to have it fail. Nick Vorsa says, why can't you remove a hash set? Well, what would I remove? I, in order to remove an entry from a hash set, you need to, oops, you need to tell it which element to remove. Oh, so I do need to, mm. okay, yeah, let's, let's take a look at the hash set API. I think I've looked at this before, yeah. Um, so why can't we just remove? So remove, you need to tell it a value to remove. And I need, so in order to remove it, I need to know a value. And there's no, is there a, like a just pull one, grab? There's a get, but again, get needs a, a reference to the value in the set. Iter is the only thing I can think of, and that'll, right, that'll tell us, that'll give us all of them. Retain, shrink to, shrink to fit, symmetric difference, union, with capacity, with hasher. Drain. Clears the set, returning all the elements as an iterator. Keeps the allocated memory for reuse. Ah, so I could drain it. Instead of iter, I can say drain. And, and now it's no longer a reference. Okay, so this is the vector. What do you think of drain? Drain seems pretty pretty straightforward and then can can I do now HS is empty right println HS and we can continue to use it yeah it's an empty set and we should be able to next add to it so now we can say for row call in V let's call them entries that's a little more descriptive than the, just the letter V Um, and then we basically have to do the same thing we did before where we need to know, oh, we have the row call. So we can say, why don't we do this? We can say let up equals, if row equals zero, then none else sum row minus one call. Right, that way, and then we can do up, down, left, right, and then we can say for direction in, up, down, left, right. Um, and then filter. How do you filter is sum? Is that a thing? No, that's an unknown. Um, but we could do a for each. Oh, it was unknown because of that, right? For dir in. No, it's still unknown. Iter? You can't do that either. Basically, I want to just uh, uh, just look at the ones that are not none, right? Because we're going to do let down is equal to if 
row plus one equals height, none else, sum row plus one call. And then left, if call equals zero, none else sum row call plus minus one and then write call plus one equals width call plus one okay what happens if i try to build that i have a um a missing close brace somewhere oh right there There. Um, option u size u size is a is not an iterator. Oh, okay, so I can say iter filter. It still doesn't give us the the thing I'm looking for. Oh, we don't want iter there. There we go. Now it's an option u size u size. Oh, it's still an option. Um, so then what I have to do is map it. I want to do that automatically. Um, there was something called a filter map, right? Rust filter map. There's a filter map in standard iter. Nanos Bitech, thank you for the follow. Very much appreciated. Welcome to the stream. Uh, filter map. An iterator that uses F to both filter and map elements from iter. So is there a good example of that? Filter map, S parse, OK. Map, S parse, filter is OK. Map, unwrap, OK. So can I do that? Iter, filter map. X is some, oh, unwrap, okay. No, I don't know how to do this. Yeah, this is wrong. Uh, Sebastian says X OK. We can try that. There's no associated function with this. Uh, there's no, there's an associated function with similar name called or. Um, yeah, so X is an option U size, U size. Some, <laughs> I don't know. There's got to be a way to do this, right? I, I just basically want to filter out any of the nuns. The, uh, the easiest way to do it, right, without all that mess, is just to say if let sum dir equals dir and do work. Right? That's the obvious way to do it. Sebastian says maybe it's just x. Okay. Iter, filter map, x, x. This is option unknown. Expected enum option found reference. Oh, do I have to start then? Oh, will that copy it? Can I do it this way? I can. Okay. And then dir becomes u size, u size. Perfect. All right, that was it, Sebastian. Thank you. Yeah, I've never used filter map before. This is the first time I've done it, and the only reason it occurred to me is because I did filter and then map, and then I remembered <laughs> filter map exists. All right, so now we have a direction with a row call that we need to, to look at. We have the max value here, so we can take a look at... Oh, yeah, what we need to do is come up with the, the maximum, the minimum value. Let min, let min equals max. And then we can say min is equal to min dot min of output 
uh, dir zero, dir one. So we can take the smallest one that's around us, up, down, left, and right. We're going to add one to it for our entry. And then we can say if min is less than output of row call. And we found a smaller version, so we set it. And now we want to be able to, for each one of our neighbors, insert them into the list of things to check. So we already have up, down, left, right. So we can say for dir in up, down, left, right, iter, alter map. Maybe I can save this off and just do it twice. Um, and then we're just going to insert it into the hash set. Insert dir. And semicolon at the end. And then at the end of the loop, we'll come back up here and say it's not empty. And so we'll do this. And it only add to the uh, hash set if we found a smaller path. Will that will that cover it? And I keep typoing output. Oops, I missed the X. All right, yeah, and now we just need to delete all of this stuff here. Boom. Boom. And put the output back. And that passes. Okay. Let's see if it's faster than the, the other version. Of course, it, it spans two pages. That's okay. We'll do two pastes. Do that. Um, go over here. Where are we? Paste. And then new line, and then paste. All right, that looks good. Looks like I pasted it correctly. Okay, so let's see if it's any faster than 465 milliseconds. Oops, the tab is off. Oh, look at that. Even with the variants that they have on their on their systems, I think we still I can say that we we did better, right? Because now we're only checking the ones that need to be checked, as opposed to scanning the entire array every single change. So I, I like this solution better, um, but obviously we can we can do even better than that because that's only. Um, but I think I've, I've spent enough time on this problem for now. Oh, I see there's a little notes thing here. Cute. All right. That's going to be that for that one. <laughs> git status git commit dash am a slightly more efficient uh, approach. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head how we could do this any better. I mean, we're basically. Yeah, maybe doing this filter map thing only once instead of twice would be good. Is that something we can do? What does Clippy say? Clippy doesn't care. Um, can we say, yeah, can we save off this as an iterator? Let valid equals this. Oh, and then, but if I use the, then maybe I have to say collect. And I'll say unknown because it doesn't know the type to collect to. And then I can say for dir invalid and then dir invalid. Right, and then we just need to tell it what the type is. Cannot infer type. Element type for this iterator is not specified. How do you specify the type for an iterator? 
because it won't tell me. Oh, there is receiver, you size, you size. It's, it's so it knows. But this receiver, you size, you size, and this says you size, you size. So why doesn't it know the type here? Because Rust Analyzer does. Weird. If I run the test, yeah, it's, it's still going to say this. Cannot infer type of dir.0. Even though it, oh, that's interesting. It knows that dir is u size, u size, but if I look at the zero, it says unknown. If I say as u size, Yeah, it, that's not going to help. But can I put a colon here? No, you can't specify the type there. And I don't want to say re, if I say receiver, you size, you size. I don't know what a receiver is. Um, not found in the scope. Standard ops receiver, standard sync core ops receiver. Let's let's try this guy and see if that helps. Oh, I'll need to in, use it there, right? Let's put it here. Use of unstable library feature receiver trait. Wow, this is getting more and more complicated. There should be a way to do this, right? We should be able to create an array of filtered entries collect um, can I just do this you size you size will that work oh vec a oh, you size you size yeah and now this needs to be copied because this is a um, All right, that was a journey. Yeah, because I did. I put an ampersand here. We don't actually need the ampersand there because we can use it up. We can just consume it, right? We need it here because we're going to use it again. And here's where we use it again. Um, and if we don't use it again, it just gets dropped at the end of this loop. Okay, let's see if this works any faster. Watch, it's going to be slower. Um, is that all I need to copy? I think so. Paste. Yeah, it's a little bit longer. All right. 134 was the old best. 90 milliseconds. Okay, wow. Sebastian says, I guess you could also apply fold to the iterator and move the for loop there. Um, okay. Do you mean here instead of filter map? We do a, but the fold, fold combines, oh, move the min into the fold. Okay. Yeah. Right. So we can say valid iter fold, um, max comma a b a dot min b something like that and then that goes there this goes like that Uh, I did something wrong. Oh, 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 I need the output. A dot min of output B. Because A is going to be the uh, the max of the I32, and B is the index into, right, output view 0, 
v1. Got it. Yeah, that works. So that gets rid of that. It's going to take, take the same number of cycles. It just does it in a more um, functional programming way. Oh, uh, and Sebastian says, now I can get rid of the collect. The problem is I, I need it here as well. Um, I can try, but I, th I think that'll... Oh. Creates a temporary which is freed while still in use. Yeah. So, yeah. I un Unfortunately, that doesn't work. It would be nice to be able to eliminate that, right? But this this works. So this, this is a nice solution. Um, and this, we might be able to, there might be a... Um, HS, I know there's a like a from vec for on the hash set, right? Somewhere. Uh, hash set. Rust hash set from vec. Oh. Not really. From iter. Okay. <laughs> so we might be able to do that here as well, right? Oh, but that's from iter. I want to insert as uh, insert into an existing. Um, oops, I don't want that. Um, I don't see from iter here. Let's see. I mean, I could always build a separate hash set and then just merge the two, right? But that might be, um, yeah, that might take longer. It'd be nice to be able to change this into, into something where I can say just add, add these guys in. Yeah, it just inserts one at a time. There's no from predicate or something. All right. Very good. Um, let's commit this as our, oh, there we go. Our best so far. Can we just change, copy this, move it over here? Was it this? Yeah, now it's 168. So there's there's a bunch of vari variability, a lot more variability than I thought there would be. Okay, but this is good. I like this this solution. Good. Okay, um, that's two down. Zero one matrix.